Seca. No coffee this morning, bro. Oh, yes, I was popping over to the store for a minute for you, and I honestly said, fuck it. I'm free to play. Why should I get you coffee? Sure. Anyways, my experience of playing the game, I was wondering what you believed about weapon banners and if they're worth summoning on or not. Uh, that really just depends on where you are in the game, actually. Like, I, I wouldn't recommend, like, for a brand new player to do it or something like that. <laughs> you think I'm new? I'm just free to play and I'm a god. <sighs> I understand why you do this in the first thing in the morning. Where are you going, Sekka? I'm getting coffee! All right, so yesterday I polled you guys and I was really surprised at the results of the poll. I asked you guys if you guys will ever summon on a weapon banner. Uh, thank you for responding. And uh, I wanted to make a video regarding this topic. If you didn't get that notification, you forgot to hit this red button over here and then turn that one on and hit the all button. If you are a brand new player and you're considering summoning on a weapon banner, this is gonna extremely hamper your enjoyment of the game because your character roster is not filled out enough to start summoning on a weapon banner. You're gonna be, feel like you're locked into specific characters and you can't you know, try out different things. My personal opinion on this is if you are a newer player, someone within the next two, first two to three months of the game, it is probably not the best course of action if you are looking to broaden your horizons in the game and try different characters. One of the reasons I'm wanting to summon on weapons, the current power scaling in the game is something that specifically targets characters being more powerful than other characters, but weapons have become linear in power and actually just shore up other characters and make them more powerful based on them having the appropriate weapon versus being a power creep overall. All right, guys, so I am on my free to play account right now and I've made a decision. I am starting to do something different on my free to play account. And the thing I'm gonna be doing differently on my free to play account is I am going to start summoning on weapon banners. And the reason I'm gonna be starting summoning on weapon banners is I think it's the best course of action. So. My free-to-play account right now has been active for about 132 days at this point. I've unlocked a bunch of achievements, got all my anima, Uncle IG, Uncle all that stuff, beaten all the Spiral Abyss, gotten a lot of common chests and stuff, but it's not that many because, you know, I'm a Pega and I really just don't want to farm more chests. Um, my characters, as you can see here, we got Kaya, Bennett at 90, and then everything else is in the 80s right now. And then, of course, the character I'm, I've built out next is Zhao. And then I'm going to start building on Chung Young and some other characters. But what I have noticed is, as time has gone on is the things that I can't build. As you can see, there's all these other characters here that I haven't built. I go back to my character screen here. I can't build any freaking characters because, you know, moral wits are a huge problem. So if you don't know this on free to play accounts, and you don't play for the because I just picked up Shin Chu as my free character because I didn't have him. And I basically just picked him up just because I was like, yeah, I need some stuff. But if I get a certain weapon like the Jade Cutter or something like that on a free to play account, which I don't have yet or anything like that, but or I get any other weapons, I can use it on Shin Chu or can use other weapons on other characters. But the thing I can't do is if I build another, if I get another character, I can't build them because I don't have resources and I'm not going to have resources for a few months. So the thing I will get, though, is a shitload of Mystic Enhancement Ore. And I have never once on my free to play account in 132 days farmed Mystic Enhancement Ore, like at all. And I currently have 681 left. If I had been farming for the first 132 days on my free to play account and I actually farmed out like infinite every single day and get 30 of these every single day, that's a total of uh, 3,960 Mystic Enhancement Aura in addition to what I have right now that I would have on my account if I actually rock farmed every day. So at this point on my account, it just makes sense to summon on weapon banners because if I had farmed, Mystic Enhancement Wars every day, which I didn't because three accounts and fuck that. Um, I would have more weapons built out and I could build more characters in different ways. So I only have one five star weapon right now, but I have a couple of five star characters. And I think for the next few months, instead of saving for characters like I thought originally for a new character that I might want is I'll probably summon on weapon banners because then I can just build out other five star or four star characters with five star weapons and have a good time doing so. And see how we're about four and a half months into the game? It seems like it's time. It seems like it's time. 
The other reason I think it's good to summon on a weapon better right now is because at this point in the game, I highly doubt that any time in the next few months, we are going to get a power creep on weapons. There's not going to be anything that's going to be coming out for another higher rarity of weapon. We potentially could get five star craftable weapons at some point, but from what I can see, I think it would be really, really unlikely that we're going to get a power creep on weapons in the game. There were most likely just power creeps on characters. Reason being is because people would be too upset this early on in the game. So something on a weapon banner right now would probably be the best choice for me. So the major reason I don't think that there is going to be a power creep on weapons is how four star weapons and five star weapons have come to the game and how we've expected them to be received and what they actually have for abilities, base stats, etc. So for every four star weapon in the game, this is where I'm going to start and then I'll go to five stars in a minute. For every four star weapon in the game, there is a power baseline that they all revolve around. The first stat that get revolve around is going to be the base attack of a weapon. And the second is going to be the secondary stat or the primary stat, however you want to reach it. Now, the base attack of a weapon, if the base attack is high, where it starts at 44 on a four star weapon, that means that the weapon is going to actually go up by a significantly lower amount than if it started at a lower base attack stat. Now, the best way to give you an example of that would be comparing crit chance to crit chance and crit damage to crit damage for different weapons, but that's a little bit harder to do. So what I can do is we do it with the energy recharge. So the best way to show this would be with the festering desire. And the Festering Desire, if you did not know, is a weapon that scales off of energy recharge on the main stat. It starts at 40, uh, it's 42 base attack, and comparing to the other two uh, energy recharge weapons, which both start at 41 base attack, it will end at a very much lower value. At level 90 on all three of these weapons, you can see that the Favonius Sword will end at 61, whereas the uh, Sacrificial Sword will start at end at 61, and finally, the Festering Desire will end at 45. So. All weapons kind of follow this formula where if they have a high base attack, they have a lower secondary stat. And if they have a low base attack, they have a higher secondary stat. And that's good and bad in different for different characters in different situations. So that's the current balancing mechanic. Those types of things aren't really going to change from four star weapon to four star weapon. And I don't really see any changes in any weapons, including the new lithic weapons, that there's going to be any changes in main stat and base stat and what you're going to receive. The only real thing that has been changing for weapons is going to be the special ability that each of the weapons have and then what it gets to at different refines and because each of these weapons have different abilities this is the only thing that's potentially subject to change these is dependent on refinement and if you're a free-to-play player most free-to-play players will not get a refined five weapon for quite some time. The only one you're gonna of course have is gonna be the Festering Desire, which is of course the free weapon that everyone did receive during the Dragon Spine event. If you didn't receive it, unfortunate, but it's gone now, sorry. So back to the basic comparison of the weapons I wanted to talk about first, which is gonna be Battle Pass weapons, Black Cliff weapons, and the, fest and the free weapon that we got. These three weapons tell me a huge power scaling mechanic that the game wants to be revolved around. Now, if we're looking at the Black Sword, which is the Battle Pass weapon, this weapon weapon increases normal and charge attacks by 20% and additionally gives you a heal mechanic um, based on whatever attack that you may have and if you score a critical hit you get the heal it can only occur every five seconds and it's a really good mechanic to get your he hit character healed up as well as deal extra damage perfect ability for a character that's using normal and charge attacks like a chick it has a crit chance main stat, which is a phenomenal thing. And all the battle pass weapons revolve around this type of ideal. Now, all these weapons that we've seen in the game for battle pass weapons, including the Solar Pearl, the, the Serpent Spine, the Viridescent Hunt, and finally the, um, the, the, the Deathmatch, all of these weapons are the current main DPS weapons that you should be using if you have a battle pass. And that's what they want the game to revolve around. In order to improve the power scaling for weapons, they would have to change the balancing of five, four star weapons and give us a different type of weapon. So we go to a Blackleaf Longsword. A Blackleaf Longsword is the current Star Glitter Shop weapon. 
This current weapon is a weapon that you have to purchase with Masterless Star Glitter and gives a crit damage stat as well as after you're defeating opponents, attacks percentage stats, which a lot of people don't really like because it's really hard and finicky to use. Now, the reason these three are the kind of the baseline of where I think that we're gonna see a lot of weapons is because of the new Lithic Blade. The interesting thing about the new Lithic weapons is that the Lithic weapons have the same stat where if you're looking at both lithic weapons they both will have the same special ability with different attack percentage modifiers and these attack percentage modifiers by the way are equivalent to other weapons with attack percentage modifiers For example a royal longsword of course will start at 42 base attack and get an attack percentage amount and of course have scaling crit chance as a passive ability which will be different of course than the lithic weapons but both of these lithic weapons have the exact same passive and it's going to be linear for all the lithic weapons as well as then these are all the ones specifically for leeway there's going to be an entire set for monstat characters as well so that means the four star scaling is going to remain linear and they're not going to improve from this point on now let's go into five star weapons and talk about those very briefly now the three five star weapons i want to go over of course are going to be the aquila favonia the primordial jade cutter and the summit shaper now the reason i want to go over these three weapons specifically is there's two event weapons and one weapon Weapon that's going to be on every banner going forward which is the aquila favonia now the aquila favonia is by far one of the best weapons in the entire game for a physical based character and it's the best weapon in the game for of course a physical based gene as well as a physical based kaching but you know physical based dps is kind of uh, hit and miss depending on how, how you look at things so Looking at the Primordial Jade Cutter, this is an HP-based weapon that, of course, has a similar passive, but it still falls along the same rules. Now, the Primordial Jade Cutter is the first weapon of its class to actually go outside of 46 to 48 base attack. No other legendary weapon has ever gone below uh, 46 base attack before the Primordial Jade Cutter, which is the reason I wanted to talk about it. So what that means to me is that secondary stat values of these legendary weapons or five star weapons is going to be the thing that's going to really improve the secondary stat to another level because at maximum it's at 44% crit chance, which is a very high amount of crit chance. But that means that you're going to hit for significantly lower. And the way they shore up that is by giving you, of course, a special ability that makes you hit harder. Now, this leads me to believe that there is a set power scaling for five star weapons and all five star weapons are going to be a follow that same criteria and five star weapons going forward are going to be pretty linear now i don't expect there to be a five star weapon power creep for quite some time because every single weapon that's come out for the first four and a half months has been of the same power scaling for both four star weapons and five star weapons the lithic weapons are nothing different than all the other ones the only difference between that is that the lithic weapons can hit harder, but they're going to require you to have a significantly higher crit chance and crit damage value on your substats if you are going to be using very much less characters from Leeway. All right, guys, my name is Sekapoko. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope I helped you out with some of the insights of where I'm at currently as far as what I believe the game direction is going to be and potentially what we could see for character banners going forward as well as weapon banners going forward for different scales of power creep. Have a great day, guys. Peace.